So welcome to Techno Dad Life, where we build, learn, and create as a community. And on today's episode, what we're going to be doing is looking at Raspberry Pi alternatives. And so the difference between this video and every other video you're going to be seeing is we're not going to be recommending any ARM boards. We're going to be looking at computers that are already out there that actually uh, serve the same purpose and either are as cheap or as power or more powerful or use the same amount of electricity but are not raspberry pis and if you like this video make sure you like and if you haven't already subscribe and here we go now <laughs> And a special thanks to all my patrons who, without your support, this channel would not be possible. So, thank you. So, welcome to Techno Dad Life, and my name is Jeff. And what I do is I make videos about servers, computers, technologies, and also do reviews. And on today's episode, we're going to be looking for alternatives or looking at alternatives to the Raspberry Pi. The Raspberry Pi is very popular, but it does have some drawbacks. Mainly, uh, it's USB, which is a sh only USB 2, and it's actually shared with the Ethernet port. Uh, it is not upgradable, and when you add in a, a external hard drive, which you have to add in a uh, powered external hard drive, it actually isn't as energy efficient as everybody thinks. So today's alternatives are going to be computers that in some way address any of those things that we just talked about there. So here is our first one right now. Okay, so our first option is a netbook. So this is an Acer Aspire 1 and I actually got this free and netbooks are this interesting thing in that there were millions of them sold uh, but now Windows, Windows 10 doesn't really work on them. Uh, this netbook, it came with a 320 gigabyte hard drive. Uh, it has one a USB 2 port and it has three U uh, two USB ports. Has a HDMI port and a VGA port. Came with four gigabytes of memory and a 320 gig hard drive. Uh, why I like them is because people are giving them away because, yes, Windows doesn't run on them anymore. How is this better than a Raspberry Pi? So, a couple reasons. So, one it has a built in keyboard and screen, so you can see very quickly what's happening. Uh, the other is it even has battery backup, so if your power ever go out, goes out, your server will be saved. Uh, plus, they are cheap, so again, I was given this one. Uh, they are on eBay. This particular model I just looked up was selling for $25. So our next option is an old laptop. And so I like old laptops because of two things. So again, they have the battery backup, but a old full-size laptop, you can actually put a second uh, hard drive in here. And they have these little hard drive things that you can buy on either Amazon or eBay. I'll put a link below if you're interested in one of these. So the great thing about this one, again, is since it's a laptop, it has battery backup. Again, it has a full-size keyboard. So this particular one, I got for free uh, in my office. The screen is fading. This this laptop. This laptop is uh, about ten years old, but it has an i7. Uh, again, it has four gigabytes of memory, just like the Chrome or the uh, netbook did, and it came with a 500 gig hard drive. Uh, the screen was fading, so it was given away for free, but for our purposes, just the black and white, uh, since we don't worry about color, if we're going to be using it as a server, it works fine because the black and white part, uh, when we use it in black and white, it works perfectly. 
And so next on our list is old server equipment. This one actually I got brand new on EB. I That was, I think, my first video I ever made. And it is a small office server, think server, and it's very heavy, so I'm gonna set it down. So basically you can find new and used server equipment, which is perfect for home use. It is not as efficient as say like a Raspberry Pi, but it is generally, you can get them very cheap. So like, uh, so that particular one uh, I bought brand new, it was a few years old. It was only $99, but you can actually find more powerful servers that are even less money if you look, especially in the auction section. And so another option is used or old uh, home PCs. And so this one in particular is a quad core AMD machine and it has 12 gigabytes of memory. It's not the fastest thing, but it's great for having as a server because you can run uh, even run multiple VMs or virtual images on it. And so again, it's very heavy though. So they're not the most efficient, but they are cheap. And again, that one I got for free because uh, people just upgrade their PCs and then they usually either give them away or you can find them for small amounts of money. And again, you can find those either on Craigslist or eBay, uh, your best choices there. And so our next choice are these little nooks and they have, there's many similar ones to this. And so basically a nook is a, what's next generation computer uh, originally designed by Intel, but again, there's lots of different varieties of them. And so these ones are great because they're small, they're actually power efficient. And I'll show you a comparison between this and a Raspberry Pi. And the great thing about these is, again, there's been so many made that they're relatively cheap. And so this one I got for a little less than $110. So maybe not quite as cheap as a Raspberry Pi, but if you include the hard drive in the case to run the hard drive, then it's about the same as a Raspberry Pi. And this one in particular, which I'll leave a link to below, is one with, it actually has a built-in 32 gig SSD. And so if you're running something like Open Media Vault, you can put the OS on the SSD and then uh, there's room for another two and a half inch hard drive. And uh, because I upgrade all my laptops to SSDs, I have lots of hard drives. If not, that would be an added expense for you. So, so very, very nice. And so our next option is something called a bevy. And if you don't know what a bevy is, is uh, basically Google, before they had their photos option on their thing, they start, they tried to sell these bevy computers. And so basically a bevy is a nook that comes with either a one terabyte or a two terabyte hard drive. And so because people don't know about these or how they can be used, uh, you can get them very cheaply look at these two so if you look at these two you can see they're basically the same this is a regular nook this is a bevy nook and these actually have the same model numbers and so the difference is this one uh, came with a 32 gig ssd has room for a hard drive this one does not have the 32 gig ssd but it comes with a two terabyte hard drive and so this one in particular only cost me, including shipping, $24, and I got it through auction. And so why that is, is the Bevy is set to work, basically boot in and try to log into a service that no longer is, exists. And so what you have to do is actually open it up, and you do that on the back here. And uh, basically you have to hard reset it to change the password and then you can actually put a different operating system on it. 
So most people don't do that, do that, so you can find these very cheap. There are some people who are you know, trying to sell them more than a regular nook. Those don't sell very well. Uh, this one in particular, uh, I found it in the photo section rather than in the uh, PC section or computer section. So uh, there weren't very many people looking in the photo section for a computer. So as you can see, there's many different options for computers. You just don't have to go out and buy a Raspberry Pi. Raspberry Pis are nice in themselves, just that they uh, are limited to ARM software. And so ARM software is basically the computer chip. ARM is a computer chip, which does not have as much software going for it. It's still very good and it's very efficient. When I found there is cheap energy efficient sort of x86 computers, then I can run all the software that I want. So for me, this is a better choice. And so now for two out of the box uh, servers. And so our two bonus uh, tips here for things you can use uh, are one is an old NAS itself. So this one's a Synology. There's also QNAP. Uh, QMNAP I find has the best support. And so basically these old uh, NAS is, they have uh, ARM processors, and so there are a few guys installing Debian on there, and if once you have Debian installed, you can uh, install Open Media Vault over there. It will be slow because they have tend to have slow processors. Uh, the best uh, the best guide that I found was actually for a QNAP, but it should work the same on a Synology. And so for Synology, I actually found a two-bay ARM processor Synology with two one-terabyte drives for only $60. It's plugged in and at use at my office, so I can't show you now, but I will show you this one. This is another one. Uh, so this is a Synology uh, 251, I believe. And uh, so this has a quad-core uh, uh, I think Celeron processor. And so this is a great one because uh, basically you can just install any uh, server software you want on here, like Open Media Vault, directly onto it, just like you would do any other computer stall. Uh, the nice thing about this, besides the two bays, is that it actually has two Ethernet ports, it has USB. 2 and USB 1 also and then it even has a HDMI port so you can uh, so then you can hook a monitor to it also and so that's it for today if you like this video make sure you like and if you haven't already subscribed and we'll see you next time bye bye